morning everybody so here we are we're at uh, Hinkley test centre and uh, we're just coming out of the car park here you can't always park in this uh, bit uh, but we've managed to this morning so we're just going to come out this way we'll, we'll go through all the test routes coming out of this car park in different ways but today we're going to turn left onto this main road here this is going to be test route number one uh, for Hinkley and it's test route one of 12. So there are 12 test routes, there are a dozen test routes for Hinkley and uh, this is number one. The other 11 will be on uh, YouTube as well shortly and uh, if you just click the subscribe button you'll be able to follow those. We've just passed one junction on the right and we're going to take the second one on the right which is this one here and it's called Holt Road. This is Holt Road. Now the thing about Holt Road is as you can see there are parked cars usually all the way along it and you, your view isn't is a little bit restricted so you've got to be quite careful as you as you proceed along this road. It's a little bit of an uphill and very often they will get you just to pull up and park along here um, so you can pull away again and that'll be a hill start. So as we continue along Holt Road, we're going to go all the way to the end of it. It's a fairly long road. And as you can see, there are parked cars dotted here and there. Um, sometimes they will use one of these cars so you can do your parallel park as well. So, you know, you're getting the kind of exercises in, the kind of, uh, you know, uh, things in quite early on. Uh, during the test. When we come to the end of Holt Road, we're going to be turning, let me think, <laughs> uh, left. We're going to be turning left into Higham Way. The same applies to this road, really, is it? Uh, it's quite wide, um, so you can do a parallel park along here. As we come along here, at some point we're going to be turning right, but it's not this first one, but it's the next one. So we're turning right into this one. You'll see there's no road markings in the centre of the road, so it'll be up to you to kind of position yourself correctly and try and make sure you don't cut the corner here. It's quite easy to do. We've just turned into Atkins Way. It's Atkins Way, you'll see uh, quite a lot of instructors will use this road to do uh, practice manoeuvres on and things like that as well. It's quite a wide road. And when we come to the end of this road, then we're going to turn right. It's actually a crossroads. It's not really the end of the road, but we're going to turn right here and this will take us from Atkins Way into Farlash. It's just a car coming, so we'll just hang on for a few seconds. Again, a little bit of a hill, so you might need a bit more gas just to get you up the, up the hill, just so you don't lose too much power. go all the way to the end of this far lash. Strange name for a road really isn't it? <laughs> I always thought that was a bit weird. As we come to the end of here we're going to be turning right. We just go past this learner car. Going to be turning right at the end of this road. This is Forrester's Road that we're turning into now. Another quite wide road, really. I'm going to be taking the second left, so that's the first one. Forrester's close. So we're going to be taking the second left, just where that car. That black car is coming from now and where the red car is turning into. 
It's a downhill, so make sure you've got your braking all sorted out before you start to do your turn. And this is called Boys Laid Road. As soon as you get into Boys Laid Road, then you'll be asked to turn right. And that's the next right here, just down by uh, the co-op. All of these roads really, they're all, um, a lot of them are quite wide, but when you turn in they're to the kind of side road parts of them, they're kind of a bit tight. So it's, it's quite easy to cut the corner. Uh, so you have to be careful about your position as you, as you drive into the roads. So this one's quite narrow, quite bendy. And we're just gonna make sure that we keep a good position. We just let this person do whatever they're doing. And you'll notice I've stopped here, so I'm keeping the junction open as much as I can. Is the van pulling off? No, that's it. And this is Atkins Way. What it does is it goes into, uh, it becomes Azalea Drive at some point. I'm not quite sure where it does that. We're going to be taking, I think the next right here is where we go. There we are, into Astor Way. But again, it's one of those where it's good to keep a good position on the road. Well, particularly as you turn into the road we're going to be taking the next road on the left and this is called the ridgeway that we're turning into now and uh you know we're kind of working our way through the housing estate here aren't we really it's kind of one of those things where we've been quite lucky today we've had no meeting situations um but you, usually you'll find people pulling out in out of driveways and things like that. So you do need to be vigilant, ever vigilant really. Just working our way all the way to the end of this road here. Again, it's quite bendy, it's quite new estate, so it's quite the roads are quite bendy. I'm gonna get all the way to the end of this road, again keeping good position. We're going to turn left onto Rugby Road. Now Rugby Road's a fairly busy road. And it'll probably be that you'll need to just pause for a few seconds uh, just while the road clears. Now quite an important point here that most people, the, mo the most common way that people fail their driving test or the most common fault they get is that the Kind of observations at junctions and that's a prime example really because it's a busy road don't be frightened just to wait for a good space you know if there's a space there already move into it that's fine but make sure the space is big enough that you don't make anybody else slow down because that's where you'll get caught really caught out so we come into a, another junction here it's a roundabout we're going to be turning right at this roundabout. So we're on Rugby Road, coming to the roundabout here, we'll be turning right. First of all, wait for this uh, lady to, to go over the crossing. The thing about turning right at the roundabouts is what they're looking for now is that you do your lifesaver look and that's the extra look in your left door mirror before you come off the roundabout so that's two looks you need to make in there and the second look the one after you've signaled is your lifesaver look if you don't do that you won't pass they're absolutely looking out for that and actually it's a real big safety aspect of driving because there will be at some point in your life someone that tries to sneak in the inside there and uh, you'll be able to avoid them if you see them if you don't look then you won't see them so we 
just following this road all the way down now again another quite long road but it's a feature of this test and most tests these days um, that there's quite a few kind of long roads where it doesn't look like much is happening uh, but you just got to show that you're confident and uh, that you know what you're doing we're going to turn left when we get to the end of this road here so we're turning into three pots road and that's going to take us up to the roundabout again or a different roundabout a bit further down rugby road uh, but we're going to turn right at this one again so here again you see you're turning right at two roundabouts and that's to see if you're going to make your lifesaver look if you don't know what that is ask your instructor he will explain it to you it's very 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 important so you know i let the traffic go taking the third exit so we check our mirrors now signal now check again lifesaver look and come off the roundabout So this is now Rugby Road. As you can see, we're coming down toward the big roundabout that, that's on the M69, the M69 roundabout, <laughs> excuse me, the M69 roundabout. And uh, yeah, so this is gonna be a little bit of a challenge. It's a different type of roundabout, really. We're gonna turn right at it. And we're going towards the A5 North. And you can see written on the road it says a5n so on this big roundabout because it's all in lanes it's what they call a spiral roundabout and because it's all in lanes because the lanes are telling us where to go we're just going to get into our lane we're going to stay in our lane all the way around and then we're going to allow our lane then to take us off of the roundabout there lights are on red at the moment so these won't be on red for that long move into the inner lane here because we're turning right and on this inner lane we should see yep it says a5n a5 north and that's we're just going to follow this lane around so as we're looking at this you can see it starts to move out and let's find where it says a5 north again there it is so now we've got a choice of two lanes that say a5n we will choose the left hand one of those two and we're just going to stay in our lane. It's going to allow the lane to take us further away from the island itself. As we move around, we can now see that we're actually on the outer lane. Magic, isn't it, really? <laughs> but we're still in the kind of left-hand one of the choice we have in terms of A5 north lanes. And you can see, hopefully now, how it's going to take us off of the roundabout. So these ones, these bigger ones with the spiral and the, and the lane markings and things, are actually easier than the uh, than the normal, what you might call normal roundabouts. As we're moving into here, this is Watling Street, uh, but you'll know it as the A5, and we're going north on the A5 towards Nuneaton now. It's a 40 mile an hour zone at this point. And it's 40 for quite a long way down this road as well. So do be careful, it's quite easy. If you're doing 40 down here, you will have someone on your tail. Because most people will try and go more than 40 along this road. So it means that you'll have someone on your tail and it also means you'll feel a little bit of pressure to get, you know, get going a bit quicker, uh, to not hold people up. Make sure that you don't go over the speed limit because you're on your test and you know there's a reason they bring you here <laughs> and they're test that and what they're testing now is that you'll stick to the speed limit I did see a sign there that said camera um, there's, a, there's a speed camera I've never seen a speed camera along this road I've never seen a van parked but then it might be just that you know I've missed them uh, you know they've been here when I've not been here 
whatever. Um, and it may be that there's a camera further down the road, perhaps a stationary camera further down the road um, that, that I don't know about. So, static camera, should I say. But now we're coming along this road, we're still at 40, and you can see there's a big gap in front of us. And that's because I'm doing bang on 40. Big gap in front of us because everybody else is doing more than that. So just be careful, that's all I'm saying. And we're coming to a roundabout now. We're gonna go straight ahead at the roundabout. It will be the first exit. There's no left turn here. So straight ahead is gonna be the first exit. We're gonna be in the left-hand lane as we approach, still following the A5. looks like it's going to be all clear for us to move on so we will do that staying in the left lane we're just going to let everybody know that we're coming off here there wasn't actually anybody there to tell us in the end and this is where it changes from 40 up to 50 now so just you know show that you've seen that just demonstrate that you've seen the speed limit has changed uh, we've got a clear road in front of us so we can get up to 50 now which is what I'm doing and uh, you know, demonstrated that we've seen the signs then. But just along here now, there is another roundabout coming up. And this time we're gonna turn right. This is a third one of these kind of usual types of roundabouts that we're turning right at. What does that tell you about your lifesaver look? It's looking pretty clear. We're going round to the right. Right here's the second exit. Again, there's no left turn. So there it is, there's my look, and off we come. And then we're gonna take the next left straight away, and that'll take us into Nuts Lane. So this is Nuts Lane, and uh, quite, a, quite a chicane type of road at first, really, I suppose you could say. It's quite a busy road this one always and there's a give way line here so let's just make sure there's no one to give way to no, we're looking up the road that I am going to give way to the red car because there's not much room between us and the van that might seem like a little bit of overkill but what I don't want to do is I don't want to startle them and make them slow down we've let all them come through so now we can move on. Looking ahead of us, we've gone under the railway bridge. Looking ahead of us, we can see that there's some traffic lights and that's because there's a humpback bridge and it's a single lane really, single track, I suppose you could say, a uh, humpback bridge. So we're just gonna wait here, wait for our lights to change so that we can go over safely. And actually you can see now but there's only room for one vehicle to pass through. Under normal circumstances on a humpback bridge, you would sound your hooter just on, a, on approach to the kind of top of it, the summit of it. But you don't need to now because the traffic lights are uh, controlling the flow of the traffic. Actually, there's nobody there now. So we're continuing along Nuts Lane, and when we get to the end of it, we're gonna turn right. So looking at the road markings now, we can see there's a lane where they want us to go in order to turn right, so we'll just go into there. We'll just wait here for a few seconds. Again, this is one of those roads where it's not that easy to get yourself out of it. There we go, there's our opportunity, so we'll take it. This is Coventry Road, and we're heading towards Hinkley Town Centre. Just to give you a bit of geography, just to, so you know where you're going. We're on Coventry Road now, heading towards Hinkley Town Centre. And uh, this is quite a long road here as well. But again, it's a 30 mile an hour zone. So do be careful that your speed doesn't drift above that. You can see how wide it is and how clear it is at this point. And it's quite easy then for that to happen. So just keep a little eye on it. Make sure 
that you keep a, a you know a good a good speed that's just at or below 30. Now there's a car in front of us we're going to give him a little bit more room that's a bit more space but this is about right we don't want to get too close to the cars to anything that's in front of us really because what we need to do is give ourselves a little bit of reaction time so if he goes to turn right for instance or if he just stops and parks suddenly uh, then we have time to react to that we're still coming along Coventry Road so it's a little way it's nice when you get onto these kind of long roads like this where you can just kind of just sit back and relax a little bit but what we're going to do now is we're going to turn right at some point into Grenville Road and I have to remember where it is because I always forget and here it is <laughs> always catches me out this one does Grenville Road there we go I'm going to go around here and you can see the situation we have in Grenville Road can't you in that we've got park cars on both sides already somebody's waiting for us to go through that's fine we can we can uh, you know we can appreciate that we just give him a little bit of a wave that's fine thank you very much sir when we get to the end of here we're now going to turn left so we're turning left onto this road here i'm quite sure what this one's called to be honest with you move into the left lane the right hand lane here takes us into Sainsbury's we're in the left hand lane and we're going to go straight ahead at the traffic lights now so there's, a, there's a few sets of traffic lights along this road if you know it and uh, we're going to go straight ahead at the first two sets I think and then right at the third set I think that's how it works let's just have a look probably missed a set out <laughs> so that's what no three sets and then right at the fourth set okay so here we are so we're going to go straight ahead at this one we we'll follow this through and we can see the lane markings are telling us to get into the center lane again there's two lanes to choose from here choose the left hand one always choose the left hand one and you'll see why in a few seconds why that's so important so we're moving off here now that's naturally going to take us into the left hand side of the road here and again there's two lanes but they merge they're going to merge from the right so have a good look in your right hand door mirror make sure there's nobody kind of merging in and trying to overtake you at that point really important because you know you need to know if people are there and what this one does it puts us in the kind of right hand lane to go straight ahead here the left hand lane is just a filter lane that takes us off to the left so we're going to stay in this one and now we're going to turn right at this next set of lights which is going to take us into the borough there's a keep clear here and there's just enough room to put your car over the end of the keep clear and we'll stop at the line and it means we've just got our back wheels off of the keep clear and we're fine here I suppose that depends on how long your car is. This this is only a, a small car, and uh, we can just fit in there. So, you know, do be careful of that as well. We don't want to stop on the keep clear. We want to keep the keep clear clear, basically. So we're just waiting for the lights to change in our favour. There'll be a green arrow comes on on these ones that, we, that turns into the borough by the dog and gun. And when the green arrow comes on, it means everything else that's, that's, that's uh, you know, uh, to do with us will be on red. So it's about to happen now. You'll see the red car over the way there. He's already stopped. He's already on red. There we go. And there's your green arrow. And that means that they're stopped. The people on this side as well, they can't come round here anyway. So it means that you can go. And we're going to turn left at this one here as well straight away down by the pizza place and then immediately we're going to turn right 
So we're turning right here, down by uh, the Concordia Theatre. Who's on today? Doesn't say, does it? Okay, anyway, there it is. Not that I would probably go to it anyway, to be fair. <laughs> so, that's that. But it's a nice situation for us. Can't really see around this lorry. We can see past the inner part of it, the white car coming through. Nothing coming through after that. So it looks like we're gonna be okay to go. We'll proceed with caution. We'll just make sure that it is clear before we commit ourselves into the space, and that's fine. Uh, when we come to the end of this road here, which is called Stockwell or Stockhead or something like that, we're gonna turn right. Stockwell Head, it's actually called. <laughs> There you go. There are some strange names for roads around Inkley, let me tell you that much. Just going to wait here now because there's somebody waiting to turn into this road. I'm not quite sure whether he's going to want to make the turn before us or he's going to wait for us. It looks like he's waiting for us. But in the meantime, we've got traffic coming from the left anyway, from the right, should I say, anyway. So we're just going to sit and patiently wait. It looks like we can go now. Yeah, the fellow on the right is waiting for us. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. There you go. And that's going to take us into uh, around here. It's going to take us around this um, crossing and into Castle Street. So we're coming along Castle Street now. And uh, we're gonna to come to the end of Castle Street. We're gonna turn right. Now where we turn right at the end of Castle Street here seems to be one of my, my students' least favorite junctions. <laughs> because sometimes you can be there a little while before you get out. And sometimes you just straight out. So it's a weird one really. We're going to turn right at the end of it. How we're going to position the car, we're going to make sure that we square onto the line so we can see both ways. It's a bit blind from one side, but this time we can get straight out. There's a dustbin lorry on its way right down here, so it's given us a gap that we can move out into. So this is called London Road and it'll change to, um, I think it's called Burbage Road in the end, it changes at some point. We're going past the, uh, what used to be the pub, I think, I don't know if it's open still, uh, past the golf garage. And along here, a little bit of a narrow gap, just slow down for that, let that clear. Let the van come out as well. And then just by the SO garage, just after the SO garage here, we're going to turn right at these traffic lights. So looking at the traffic lights ahead of us, we can see there's four lights where there would normally be three. So the bottom two lights are both green lights. One is a solid green light, which is coming on now so we can move forward. The one on the very bottom is a green arrow. We don't have to wait for the green arrow. We can go, if it's clear, before the green arrow comes on. When the green arrow does come on, it just means that everything, is, everything else is on red and it's gonna be safe for us to go anyway. So let's see what happens. If there's a space first, we'll move in. If not, we'll wait for the arrow and it looks like this time there's going to be a space first. So after this second black car, even though the green arrow's not come on yet, and it never did come on in the end, we're going to just go round there. How weird is that? The green arrow didn't come on. That's a strange one, isn't it? Maybe it's because we were perhaps the only car there. Don't know. <laughs> perhaps it's not working. Perhaps the bulb's gone. Could be that. Yeah, could be that. There you go. But that's, that's the principle of it anyway. This is now Brookside, and um, it's the road where the test centre is. 
so the test is coming to an end and you can see it's fairly clear it's fairly easy to come down this road uh, do be careful at this point because you'll know that you're on your way back you will know that and it's quite easy then just to relax a little bit you know be 10% less concentrated than you were before and uh, that's where you can make that kind of fatal mistake so really really important along this road that you just keep your concentration level right up and that you can you know that you don't make any silly mistakes towards the end this test route by the way it's had quite a few junk there's quite a few roundabouts where you've turned right so again life saver look quite a few roads where there's been parked cars uh, in our way so there's a real potential for meeting situations so do be vigilant on those and some quite busy major roads as well a5 big roundabout at the m6 as well so there's a kind of mixture and it's a test isn't it so it's test it's going to test all of your kind of all your your driving uh, abilities in all kind of different situations but here we are now we're going to turn right into the test center now do be careful here not to indicate too early we want to be at least level with this first bridge road and then we can indicate then good idea here i know there's a car coming so we're gonna to have to do that anyway but good idea to drop the car into first gear just use a little bit of clutch control to bring yourself around and then we'll park up I'm going to park on the end by the chip shop. Very nice chip shop, actually. <laughs> and that's test route number one.